Well, uh, I'd like to uh, offer you a ride. I mean, my car is right there. Oh, that's your car, right? Uh, no, no, the, the hearse, the gray one. That's that's my car. This movie was highly requested, so you know I had to do it. And honestly, I have never seen this movie all the way through, so I was interested to see what the hype was about. First off, the soundtrack, dope. It's a vibe, okay? But Nina and Darius were a complete mess. And you know I have my thoughts. I had to pull out the counters for this one. Let's get into it. We open up the film with Nina, a struggling photographer who has recently broken up with her fiance. She appears to be moving out of their apartment and she's clearly sad about their current state since his ass went missing and she don't even know where he is. Child, this movie already starting off bad. <laughs> we then go to Sanctuary, a local bar where poets and other artists come together and we meet Darius, the second main character, and his friends Savan, Wood, Eddie, and Sheila. Now they're talking about whether they believe that romance is dead or not and how Sheila needs romance in her life. And Wood thinks he knows what every woman needs and all that jazz. Y'all, Bill Bellamy low-key played the same person in every one of his roles because his character here reminds me of his character on How to Be a Player. Yeah, we got to do that one. But anyway, Darius thinks he knows a definite answer to their debate about romance. When people who've been together for a long time say that the romance is gone, what they're really saying is they've exhausted the possibility. Uh. Just so happens, Nina is at the same bar. And of course, two lovers meet at the bar. Now, they are staring each other down. Meanwhile, Darius's guy friends take notice of Nia at the bar, which starts a whole new debate on if Darius will fuck it up or not. So, back at the bar, Nina decides to strike up a conversation. What are you thinking about? A woman I saw once. Meanwhile, Darius's friends are still watching his every move, and his friend, air quotes here, Wood is hating from the back of the club. We are going to be paying close attention to this fraud. Matter of fact, he's getting a counter. Anyway, back to Nina and Darius. So Darius introduces himself to Nina, and while trying to act cool, he knocks a drink over. It's awkward for a sec. He buys her another drink, and Nina suggests that maybe he not smoke, which is crazy because she smokes. Soon after, Eddie introduces him on the stage and he goes up to recite his poem. He ends up naming this poem a blues for Nina. Child, he didn't already name the poem after her. And I just want to give you injections of sublime erections and get you to dance to my rhythm. Make you dream archetypes of black angels in flight. I mean, I'm not saying he would have had me after that poem, but I would have gave him my email. They didn't have social media back then. And his hating ass friend gives his two cents. <laughs> wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. No, no. So Sheila tells Wood that he shouldn't front because Darius did his thing. And then his hating ass gonna say he doesn't need poetry to get women. And Sheila and Savan set him straight. I don't need poetry to get women. No, you need a personality to mm, get with. Mm, try a breath vent and a visa. <laughs> so later, outside of the club, Darius and his friends are talking, and Nina and her friend, Josie, walk up to them. She thanks him for the poem, and he makes a not-so-subtle request. So maybe next week, you can write something for me. Did she ask you to write the poem, though? Look at him, making demands already. She then tells him that, if she were to write a poem about him, it wouldn't be about sex. Darius gets offended and Nina lets him know that nothing is wrong with sex, but there are more subjects to write about. When he asked her to clarify, she walks over to him and begins writing on his hand. Now for a moment, he thinks he has this in the bag, but no, 
not at all. So we go to Nina, who is currently an assistant to a demanding fashion photographer named Roger. He is butthurt about not getting his curry chicken and tells her that she may be better off on her own since she doesn't have the temperament to work for him and thinks she will be better off. We then go to Darius, who is telling Eddie that he has quit his job and is putting full focus into his novel. Later, Nia goes into a record store that Sheila just so happens to work at, and Nina is in desperate need of an Isley Brothers CD to clear her mind, since she basically just lost her job. And of course, Darius walks into that same record store and sees Nina. So he decides to go up to her and flirt a little. He offers to play her a song, and she's hesitant at first, but gives him the go-ahead. She recognizes the record. Charlie Parker. I've never heard this particular. She listens for a minute and then turns to pay for her records. While doing this, she passes Sheila a check and starts to leave, but Darius stops her to ask her out on a date. Now in her defense, she told him straight up that it was bad timing and that she wasn't open to dating at the moment. But what did his persistent ass do? He got her address off of the check against Sheila's advice and better judgment. Not even considering if she stayed with a dude, if the dude was psycho. Hell, if he would appear psycho going to a random woman's house unannounced. None of that. His happy ass went to her house and knocked on her door with a smile on his face. And her delusional ass opened the damn door. Girl, you don't know him. I know it's a little strange to me just to show up to a place like this. He gives her an Isley Brothers CD that he purchased for her and she accepts it, tells him thank you, and then he just stands there. Like, bye, thanks. What, you, you trying to come in? And she lets him in. Girl, you know this is the 90s. My 2023 ass would've went into the good drawer immediately. Like, how did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. So they have some good convo. He sees some of her photography and he, again, asks her out on a date. But it's really just a get together over his friend's house. While she's still a little hesitant, she eventually says yes. And what's so crazy is up until this point, she hadn't even gave him her number. So later they're at Savans and they have another debate about whether God is a woman or not. Darius chimes in to agree with Sheila that God is in fact a woman, but Sheila quickly calls him out on his shit. Like that. Uh, wait, excuse me, but why are you trying to impress your date? Please. <laughs> <laughs> so Savon decides to break it down. Basically, since when a man gets aroused, blood either comes from his head or his feet which makes him stupid and unable to run. And it's because of this, the only logical conclusion has to be that God is a woman, because only a woman could create that, I guess. Anyway, so later as Darius is walking Nina home, and he is not a gentleman at all. How are y'all walking in the rain and you don't have an umbrella? And where is your motorcycle? Anyway, so Darius offers to take her to a reggae club. They go, and I'm not gonna lie, this scene was cute. I would've had a time at that club that night. The music was lit. So after, Darius takes her home, and again, he is persistent. He does not know how to take no for an answer. Even when it's in his best interest, he just pushes and pushes and pushes. Look, Nina, I just wanna come up and talk. And he lands right in the you know what. So. The next morning, he's making breakfast, looking all awkward in the kitchen, and he tells Nina that he's really starting to like her. I really dig you, Nina, and I hope we didn't move too fast, you know. Boy, if you don't get it! So he tells Nina that he hopes that they can continue to see each other, and she agrees to. So we then go to Nina and Josie, and Josie can sense that Nina has a new vibe about herself. Instantly, she knows that her and Darius had sex. The taxi driver was nosy as hell. I can't blame him because I would have been ear hustling too. 
So Josie asked Nina, how was it? And baby Nina hypes it up real tough. Like his dick just talk to me. What did it say? So after all that hype, she then tells Josie that she's not serious about Darius and that they're just kicking it. Okay, girl, whatever you say. We then go to Savon and his wife. Clearly, Savon did something, and the wife wasn't going for it. Darius sees all this as he walks up. Darius, go get your tired ass no, no, you keep that. So Darius and Savon end up going to play pool, and Darius asks him if he believes he's with the one he's supposed to be with. Savon says that you are with who you are with, and you just make the most of it. Honestly, he wasn't in the right headspace to even answer that question. You just seen this man's wife leave him. So, yeah. So Savon, like Josie, picks up on the fact that Darius is really feeling Nina. And they laugh at the fact that he got up and made cheese omelets and how Darius appears to be infatuated. But then, like a light, Darius tries to act like he ain't all in with Nina. Uh, you know, this ain't no love thing. Just kicking it. Bruh, now you just said she had you making breakfast. She had your mind gone, then gonna say, oh, we just kicking it. Child, stop. Who are you trying to fool? So later, Darius invites Nina to his house and she's looking over his stuff and finds the camera. She asks him to undress and she takes pictures of him. You know, a little flirty, sexy fun. Nina and Lorenz look so good here. Just brown and beautiful, child. So we fast forward to Nina and there's a knock on the door and of course, it's her ex, Marvin, to get her back. And his ass, he doesn't even know how to communicate. Not a sorry, not a my bad, I'm sorry because nothing. All right, I just, shit. You know I'm no good with this shit. I'm no good with words. He then presents her with a train ticket to New York so that she can come with him to live and be together. Like she ain't got nothing better to do. Well, what's the deal? Are you working? Are you seeing somebody? Think about it, all right? You owe me at least that. Negro, you left me. Like, I'm not understanding this. Then Nina immediately gets delusional. I need to know if I still love him or not. She tells Josie that she doesn't want to lie to Darius, which is the right thing to do. But then Josie asks, tells her to tell him and basically judge him based on his reaction. So basically, if he reacts to her leaving, then she should stay. But if he doesn't react, then she should leave. This doesn't make sense because what if he gives no reaction on the outside, but internally he's messed up about it? And then what if he fakes a reaction? Like, why not have a conversation with him without the background games that's already set up for him to fail? Yeah, this, this is a red flag. So later on, Nina and Darius are chilling at his place and she decides to tell him. You know I've had a really good time these past couple of weeks, right? Now, if anybody you date and start off a conversation like that, I'm 99.99999% sure it's gonna go left. But anyway, she tells him she's going to New York and she's not sure how long she's gonna be there. She tells him about Marvin and he acts all cool about it. Obviously, he's trying to act unbothered, but he is. We just kicking it, right? So it's cool, I mean. So you're not mad? Hell no, I'm not mad. We just friends, right? Yeah. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. So we fast forward to Darius and Savon. He's embellishing the whole situation. Tell Savon how she couldn't hang and Savon is just listening to him, but he knows it's BS because Darius said that they were just kicking it, child. Then, for a moment, he decides to be vulnerable with Savon and reveals that he thinks Nina is the one. And Savon goes into complete shock. Again, I don't know why he had this conversation with this man, knowing his current situation. 
He is not in a good head space to offer good advice and support with Darius's love issues. Quickly, Darius tries to act like he was just joking, but you know he wasn't. He was dead ass. It's crazy how Darius didn't have that space to be vulnerable, even amongst his friend group. He always had to appear to have it together or be on top of things. That shit is not healthy. And of course, just like that, he spots a placeholder for Nina. So you fast forward again to Nina leaving him a voicemail telling him to meet her at the train station before she leaves for New York. Unfortunately, it's a no-go because he's tied up with this girl. I feel bad for her because she thinks this is a cute little situation. Meanwhile, he in love with a whole nother person. And instead of him sitting out and sorting through his feelings, he just goes to the next. Not cool. Red flag. Anyway, we go to Nina who is at a job interview and it's not going well. She then goes home to Marvin who's crying about a box of cereal chow. Marvin tells Nina that basically he can take care of them and he doesn't want her to worry about rejection. Then Nina tells him that all they have is years together and that she needs and wants more than that. Marvin, of course, just ignores everything she just said, doesn't pry or ask further questions. He just gets up and goes to get some more cereal. Marvin is very dismissive. He was probably shocked when he woke up the next morning and she was gone. So we go back to Darius's friends who are back at Sanctuary and they spot Nina and baby Wood has his eyes on her. Nina and Josie are talking and about to leave since Nina has an interview the next day and she didn't run into Darius like she was hoping. As they leave out, Wood approaches them and offers a ride. Homeboy out here driving a whole hearse. Now you talk all this shit about how you are a ladies man and this love God, but meanwhile you driving the vehicle of death. How ironic. I can't believe this dude talks so much shit in the whole t child anyway. So Josie instantly cuts that shit short. Um I just remembered that um, I, 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 I parked my car down the street, so what we're going to do is um, go. Mm -hmm. But then she starts talking about how Nina and Wood would be a cute match. So my thing is, they both know that Wood is friends with Darius, right? Why would that even be considered? That's bound to be messy. Dating within a friend group like that? I mean... I'm just saying. So later, while Nina is at the bookstore, Darius just so happens to walk by, and of course, she sees him with his new boo. So out of the blue, Wood comes to Nina's job, flirting and asking for his picture to be taken. What are you doing here? You the shooter, ain't you? Yeah, but what? Then shoot me, goddammit. Immortalize my shit. He then asks her out to dinner. I don't know why she said yeah, even if she saw Darius with another girl, this is messy. Giving real bird from soul food energy right now. Baby, this date was full of random ass conversations about granny panties and thongs. Talking about people in the restaurant and how he don't wear drawers. Child. So what kind of underwear do you have on? I don't wear drawers. You don't have any on right now? No, I just let it hang. <laughs> <laughs> So eventually the news gets back to Darius that Wood and Nina are slick dating, I guess. And while him and Sheila are at Sanctuary, in comes Wood looking like a low budget shaft, coming in, hugging everybody and shit. He eventually makes his way to the table and the tension is thick. I mean, they have a convo full of shade. What's up, D? What's up, Wood? See, I got this new gig. Keeps me up, working all through the night. I know all about that kind of job. Mm -hmm. Used to work the hell out of it. You sure you can hang with it? Moms keep on paging you, huh? But we all know that uh, you ain't too good at staying employed, though. You know, and uh, as I heard it, you ain't too good at staying employed either, partner. So we fast forward to Sheila's get together and baby Savon shows up with a woman who's not his wife. 
Sheila halfway didn't want to let her in. If that was my house, they both would have had to go. You would not make me an accessory to your mess. But anyway, Nina and Wood are on their way there in the damn hearse. <laughs> Nina, girl. Now, Nina doesn't know that they're going to Sheila's get together and Darius will be there. Meanwhile, Darius is pressing Savon about the girl he brought up in there. But Savon, he ain't trying to hear that. So Nina and Wood finally get to Sheila's and baby Nina and the rest of Darius's friends are shook. Darius's friends quickly call Wood out on his shit, but of course, he thinks he's done nothing wrong. So Darius walks in the room the same time that Nina comes downstairs to tell Wood she needs to talk to him outside. So he sees her and it's awkward. Nina gets Wood together outside and realizes he didn't really want to get to know her. Shocker. That he was really trying to get to Darius. You know, like she was slick trying to do. She demands for him to take her home, but he shows his true demeanor and tells her to get to step it. Walk! So when Darius learns that Wood made Nina walk home, he runs after her to make sure she gets home safely. She resists his help. At first, you slow up, I call you a cat. Just leave me alone. Man, slow up. What? He suggests that she calls a cab and he'll wait with her to make sure she gets home safely. And then this man waits as soon as the cab pulls up to ask her questions about why she was seeing Wood. And then she finally tells him that she knows he was seeing somebody else. But what had happened? I thought y'all was cool. Y'all was just kicking it. Child. And if that, and if that's the case, why y'all so bothered? So later on, after Nina calms down, she ends up calling Darius and apologizes. She invites him out to step and he accepts the invitation. So they go out and have a good time. Child, these 90s hairstyles were sending me. Oh, my childhood. Anyway, so after their date, they're talking and Nina admits that she wanted to call him when she first got back from New York. But after she saw him with the place told her, she didn't know what to think. And Darius assures her that the girl she saw was nobody and that what they have is a destiny thing. So later they go to her home and Darius is thinking he's about to get some. And baby, she hands him a little setup for the couch. Talking about, we had a good night and I just want to keep it that way. <laughs> I just wanted to feel like I was saving something for later. And then of course, his persistent ass continues to push, but eventually she goes upstairs and he gets as comfortable as he can on the couch. But shortly after, his slick ass decides to sneak up to her room and ask her could he play a song for her. So they slow dance, and we get a montage of them together having dinner with friends, running in the park, a sanctuary, and this hater is mad. <laughs> Child, they are together, together. So one day while they're both in the bed sleep, Darius gets a call from Lisa, you know, the placeholder, and Nina overhears this. After this, the vibes are off with them. She doesn't tell him she overheard him, and he doesn't tell her about the call from Lisa. Also, he thinks she's up with Wood, but he's too scared to ask. Basically, they don't know how to communicate, and all it takes is one misunderstanding to crash whatever the hell they got going on. They have this whole argument about trust. Nina tells him how she's unable to trust his word, being that Lisa still calls him early in the morning, her number is still on his blackboard, and instead of reassuring her, Darius turns it around on her. You don't know shit say. about trust, okay? You don't. Trust? You acted like you didn't even care that I went to New York. He then tells her to come to his house and get her shit because why would she want to be with someone she doesn't trust? Child, this is a hot mess. Y'all was playing these just kicking it, you know, escape games for so long that now that y'all are truly together, y'all can't trust each other's word. Granted, it was shady as hell for him to still be accepting Lisa's calls, though. There's no excuse for that. So after their breakup, Darius has no motivation to write. He meets up with Eddie, and they end up having a conversation about love and how he messed up with both Nina and his ex, Felicia. While this is happening, Savon's wife goes back home. 
But his son looks over it though. Poor baby, he probably tired of both their ass. So we fast forward to Darius. He and his friends are hanging out when he gets a call from Josie. She tells him that Nina is leaving for a new position and she wanted to let him know so that he could see her off. Now at first, he tried to act like he could care less, but eventually he gets up and goes after her. And of course, Darius misses her by seconds. Now he knew his short fine self could not see in that train. Polo tink tink. Anyway, so we fast forward to a year later and Nia's in New York and she's doing well. And Darius has finished his novel of which he dedicated to Nina. And then sometime later, Nina finds herself back at Sanctuary and she sits next to a guy at the bar who just so happens to have a copy of Darius's book. She reads the dedication and knows it's for her. Later on in the night, Nina gets up on the mic to recite a poem for Darius. After reciting, she leaves the sanctuary and Darius gets her attention. What is with these people in rain and having no umbrellas? He tells Nina that he wants her and he's serious about her. Why is everything so urgent with you? Right now, at this very moment, is all that matters to me. I love you. That's urgent like a motherfucker. So they finally decide to stop playing games, stop acting like they don't want each other, and they finally succumb to their feelings for each other. About damn time. And that's the end of the movie. So here are my final thoughts. Nina and Darius could have solved a lot of their issues if they would have stopped fronting and communicated. It was like pulling teeth for them. So let's start with Nina. Nina had just gotten out of a relationship where her fiance basically abandoned her. Homeboy literally went in my A and she left. To her credit, she did tell Darius that it wasn't a good time, but he wasn't trying to hear that. So against her better judgment, she dates this man. They are intimate. Then of course, her ex shows up and brings back up old feelings. Instead of just telling Darius what was up and being done with it, she chose to make it a test. Then she got mad when he moved on. Girl, you told him you were going to New York to get back with your ex. What was Derek supposed to do? Stop living and wait? And then you got so into your feelings about the girl you saw him with that you went out with his friend that you knew was his friend and got mad when he took you to a get together where Darius would be. Again, you knew they were friends and it was a very big possibility this would happen eventually. Just messy. Then Darius, Lord Darius. Darius didn't know how to take no for an answer. He was persistent AF. After she told him it wasn't the right time, baby, he took that as a challenge. He went to her house, unannounced, uninvited. She could have had a crazy living boyfriend. Hell, she herself could have been crazy, but he did not care. He had to have her. Darius was always straddling the line between wanting to be vulnerable and express his feelings, but also needing to be in control of the situation. Whenever he tried to be transparent about his feelings, he instantly pulled those feelings in and went straight to ego, especially around his boys. He couldn't even be honest with Savon about his feelings for Nina. Hell, he couldn't even be honest with Nina about his feelings for Nina. And y'all know he was trifling for accepting Lisa's call in the middle of the night. Like, why, sir? What was the reason? You knew that would blow up in your face. Both Nina and Darius were hiding behind. We're just kicking it. Knowing that they really liked each other and wanted more. Why didn't they just say that? It was like they didn't want to be the first to say that they wanted more and wanted to be serious. Just making things difficult for no reason and causing so much confusion. And honestly, I hope they kicked Wood out of the friend group. Anyone who would willingly ride around in a vehicle of death should not be trusted. I'm just saying. Anyway, I thank you for watching this video. Please comment below and let me know your thoughts about this film. How do you feel about this movie now at your big age? Let me know. Currently, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, Eve's Bayou, and Baby Boy are the top requests. I, will, I think I'm gonna create a poll to determine the order in which they're uploaded. If you have a movie you would like for me to review, let me know and I will add it to the list. Anyways, see you later you guys. Bye!